calling all warriors from near and far. Welcome to another episode of The Crossroads with your host, Rashida Green. Let's start the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of The Crossroads. I'm your host, Rashida Green, and ain't nothing changed. This is still the show about environmental justice and those who fight the fight. What you thought? So as you all are well aware, I have been on what some might call a bit of a hiatus. And not for nothing, because baby, if you want to talk about dark night of the soul, that is what your friend here has been in, has been enduring. I have been going through it. And you know what? Every once in a while, we creatives, we have to honor ourselves and we have to take a break. And that's exactly what I've been doing. I've taken a break. I have decided to just let myself do exactly what I need to do so that I can be a happy, productive, creative, abundant person. And so now that I have taken the time out to handle some personal things in my life, I'm back. I'm back to my shit. I'm back here with y'all to talk about this good old planet we keep messing up, okay? So I've called this episode, you know, in case you missed it. And really, it's really in case I've missed it because I've been gone for quite some time. So I want to, in honor of the fifth season, which even to say that is insane to me, the fifth season of this podcast. Now, if you are new here, welcome. If you are returning, if you are a returning warrior, welcome back. We have missed you. I've missed myself. And this season, you know, I really wanted <clears throat> to discuss, continue to do the things that I always do. You know, I'm going to give some flowers in just a moment where I honor a lot of people because it is good in Black History Month. And we got a lot of things we got to honor and, and give our give our flowers to. But I really, this season want to be more mindful of myself. I want to be mindful of what I'm, of the content that I'm creating and bringing to you, my audience. So before I get into that, to kind of tee up what we, what we got cooking this season, I do not disappoint. We're going to give some flowers. Now, this is the segment in the show where we honor those living or who have passed on that have impacted us in some way. And I actually have a litany of people that I would like to give some flowers to. I mean, this is a list of folks, probably since Halloween, to be real about it, that I just really want to honor and plan to do in this moment. So first and foremost, I want to give some flowers to Bell Hooks. Losing her last year was just one of the many horrifying things about the year 2021. My actual goodness. I, I've recently really started, like I, I've always known who Bell Hooks was, of course. But, you know, I admit that I, I was a little resident or re, what is the word? Renaissance? No, let me just not even use no big word right now. I was, I really wasn't reading her stuff. So... Before she passed away, I did read All About Love. I reread Communion. And I've got another book coming um, from hers, from her. Um, And also, while I'm here, shout out to Loyalty Bookstore, which is a black-owned bookstore in Silver Spring, Maryland. I always make it my business to order some books from there. So I, I did order another Bell Hooks book. And that actually goes right nicely into the second person that I want to give some flowers to, which is Octavia Butler. I read Kindred 
as a part of my uh, my master's degree, my master's program. And um, right now I'm reading Wild Seed. Um, actually, shout out to my one of my good friends who's also been on the show many times, uh, Misha Forbes. She actually bought that book for me for my birthday. So I'm, I'm reading that right now. And I'm actually going to read Parable of the Sower because a friend of mine and I are going to see an opera based on that book. So right now, just so I don't have to go into the deep down details, giving flowers to Bell Hooks and Octavia Butler, rest in peace to both women. And thank you all for your excellence and your legacy that you have that you've bestowed upon us. So we are going to spend some serious time talking about this infrastructure bill. Now, if you are a, a fan, if you are a warrior in this fight, you've heard me talk a little bit about infrastructure. I've talked about some of the bridges, particularly a bridge in Michigan that had recently collapsed. We know that's nothing new. There are bridges that are collapsing, dams that are collapsing all the time. We know that infrastructure is a major problem and Joe Biden has been working very diligently to get his infrastructure bill passed. So we're gonna talk a lot about this bill and what it means, what I believe it means and what Joe Biden would like us to think that it believe it, it's gonna actually do if it is when, if and when it is rolled out. So this is a big thing. You know, we the last time we had some bill of this type or size, you know, a lot of people are liking it to the New Deal. And if you've listened to this show or if you've read any Tanahasi Coates essays or any book for that matter, you know that black folks were very much so left out of the New Deal. And if you go back to the last season and listen to the clean economy episode with Mustafa Santiago Ali, you'll know that there is a major push to make certain that black folks and other folk of color are able in the positions to participate in these, the potential job opportunities that are gonna come around and come down as a result of the infrastructure bill and as well as the, the advent of what we're calling the clean economy. These are all things that are going to impact us because the aim of this bill has really been to a way to not only restore our infrastructure because it's crumbling, we know this. We know that there are massive problems and have been historically massive problems with our piping system, our, our drainage systems. We know that a lot of those pipes are old as hell and we can see that in the, the Flint water crisis. And to be clear, Flint is not the only city suffering from this problem. It's not, this is a major issue. So that these are some of the things that at least on paper, Joe Biden and them want to address. I'm also gonna be rolling out a new series that I'm calling Stolen Lands. Yeah, I'm gonna, do some deep dives. You know, I love myself an old, nasty deep dive. And so I want to continue in that same vein, that same storytelling, information, life-giving way. So we're coming through with that. Definitely still going to have some interviews. I've definitely got some things really lined up. But really and truly, aside from wanting to just tell you all what I've got cooking for this season, I also just want, as a reminder, not only to you who are listening, but also as a, just a, a reminder to myself that you can't pour from an empty cup. If you need to take a break from whatever it is, you need to do that to renew your sense of self. I have been going hard with this show for the last three years by myself all the content, the, the ads you see on, or the posts you see on social media up until recently, all of that has been on me. And it's a lot. And I forget that because I, I've been just on the grind. I was, you know, I was in school, working hard, getting things done. And while I pride myself on being someone who likes to get things done, someone who likes to be busy, getting things done, feeling engaged, I also realize that it takes a lot of energy. 
And I was experiencing some real serious burnout. I was dealing with personal things. And honestly, to avoid a lot of that stuff, I focused on this show. I focused on, you know, engaging. And I love doing it. I do. I genuinely do. It's just that I have to make sure that I'm taking time out for myself as well. And I tried to last season not only just talk about the environment and what's going on on the planet, but also talking about internal things that are going on with folks individually, socially. And I would have been remiss to continue to do that while ignoring the fact that I hadn't taken a break in two and a half years. <laughs> that I hadn't taken a break in two and a half years, which might, you know, and, and I know there's a lot of this grind culture, this entrepreneur, and I'm not knocking anybody's hustle. That's not what I'm saying. You know, work hard, work towards your goals. But a lot of us need to make sure and be mindful of how hard we're working and taking the time away to recharge to take care of yourself and that there's nothing wrong with that I've met people who have expressed or lamented that anytime they take a break they feel bad like I'm not making any money by taking a break and I would just say you should however you possibly can prioritize yourself and your health and your well-being your mental well-being after I posted up think around Halloween I just I'd had it I would fucking had it <laughs> I and I didn't fully realize it and I felt so guilty every day I was just feeling like oh I, sh I should be working I should be doing this and I just didn't have the energy and the holidays came around and that was its own thing you know a lot of stuff came up and happened during the holidays that I really didn't expect and, you know, it, it makes me, it had made me, it makes me now really compassionate towards people who take the time to make certain that holiday celebrations can be beautiful and eventful and nurturing. It also made me mindful that sometimes we feel obligated to do things that maybe we don't have the bandwidth or the energy to do. And that it's okay to say, you know what, this year I'm not going to do that or we're going to have to make alternate plans or we're going to do something a little more low key, you know, and, and not feeling guilty about making those choices. And I just really needed to take the time to focus on myself, to get myself back to center. You know, things aren't, aren't perfect. You know, they're not all great right now, but I definitely am glad that I took the time to do that. I'm also glad that I'm, I'm opening up and talking about this because as you all know, if you listen to me, I don't like talking about my personal life. That's why I love talking about the environment because I don't have to talk about myself. I don't have to tell y'all how I'm doing. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's not a part of the subject matter up for discussion. But I realized that I was also doing that to kind of avoid thinking about how I feel, avoid thinking about what was going on around me. And that's not healthy either. So I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> hi. Say that I missed you all. I'm so glad to be back. Um, thank you for continuing. All my, all my podcast sisters who have checked on me, who have been just making certain that I'm good. Like I thank you all so much. It has been just a tremendous, tremendous blessing to have everyone of, of all my sisters just to be thinking of me. I, I really, I really appreciate it. It's sometimes, you know, when you're just grinding and going really hard, you really forget that, A, that people recognize that you're working hard and want to support you. And sometimes, and I can say and be honest with myself, I'm someone that it's difficult for me to accept help because I, I just I just feel like nobody can do the job the way that I'm going to do it. And while I mean, sure, but is that healthy? Is it healthy? Is it beneficial? Am I showing up and being authentic? And without support, I realize that's not possible. 
I've been partitioning the universe to give me an assistant. I need an old nasty assistant to just come and make these, uh, you know, annotations for me and do all this stuff and not realizing that I have friends who send me articles who are like, hey, I know this person. You should have them on your show. I've talked about uh, Raina Turner, who created the Black Sustainability Summit. She was one of the first people to actually give me guests for this show. I did not have any vision of having guests. I actually foolishly believe that I would be able to run this podcast completely by myself all the damn time. That's insane. It's insane. But I believed it. And, you know, it's not to say that I didn't do it. I did. And I it was successful. But some of the best conversations that I've been able to have are with other people. It's bringing someone else in with a new perspective or a different skill that I don't have. And that's really, you know, fundamentally, that's what this show is about. It's not just about me running my damn mouth. It's about having the conversations, hearing the different perspectives. That's the point. So I'm really excited. I'm glad to be back. So you can expect me on a, I don't want to say weekly, girl. I'm a try. But you know what? I'm not going to force myself, okay? Like if somebody else wants to come over here and do this research and get these things together so that, uh, that the doll doesn't have to, I am all for it. So I will say weekly to bi-weekly-ish for season five of the Crossroads Podcast, okay? Because y'all, all y'all really want to do is be on the internet, <laughs> gawking and stalking. Y'all are not trying to listen to me talk about infrastructure <laughs> every week, no. But thank you all so much. I'm so excited to be back. Welcome back to the Crossroads. And we will be seeing you very soon i'm available on all platforms i even have a TikTok. god is good all the time and i'm so happy to be back and connecting with everyone so i hope that everyone is doing well i hope you are ready for what i've got in store this season and also getting to see that I am going to open up more. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what's going on with me. I tried to do that a little bit last season, talking about my complete and absolute addiction to sugar, which is real. It's real out here. I love me some sugar. It's my cocaine. So going to be doing more of that, being more transparent. And thank you all for your patience. And we'll see you at the crossroads.